weeks. Okay.
the show on the road. Isn't this fun? Yeah, exactly. You handle the legislature, I'll do this. That's that. It's called delegation. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to The Nest. We call this The Nest. Let's give it a round for East Hartford High and being here. So first of all, today we wanted to bring some energy, and I think we nailed it. So I'm really appreciative of all of our students for being here. Uh, there's so many thanks to give here today, and it would take us about three hours to work through that list. But certainly want to recognize as well our mayor, our Board of Ed Chairman, Brian Hall, Certainly, we're thrilled to have Governor Lamont for the first time here at East Hartford High, and we couldn't be happier to have that. The Dalio Foundation, and obviously all of our elected officials, my colleagues, superintendents, and uh, geez, this is a list that always gets me in trouble. So everyone else for being here. Thank you all for being here. But, you know, guys, I think we can do a little bit better than that because the real guests here today that we're most excited about are the students that surround us. And uh, let's give them a round of applause. I want to acknowledge the high school team, Mr. Ryan, who every time we come up with one of these crazy ideas to do something like this, he says no problem. I don't know when he's going to stop saying that to me, but we're going to go as long as we can on that. But here at East Harvard High School around us, you'll see the, li the lines that mean so much for all of us. Begin, build, and become. And that's what today is all about. Today is about the future. Today is about the future of our kids sitting here in these seats. Today is about the future of our state. And the, today is about the future of our, of our city 
And today, really importantly, is about the future of, of kids who are going to go on and, and change Connecticut and change East Hartford and change living rooms and change street corners. And I couldn't be more proud to be a part of this. Today is really going to be about uh, an, a special announcement regarding how we continue to strengthen and change education, K through 12 education, how we provide the outcomes and access and opportunity that our kids deserve. And when we give our kids these opportunities, they thrive and they flourish and they do things that amaze us. Today is about providing economic opportunities for people who need it most. And for people that when we give them that opportunity, they do the most. And I couldn't be more proud to be here today. Today we're proving that when we work together, special things happen. And we forget about what territory we sit in, what group we represent, who we are individually, and rather we come together, real things start to happen. So with that, uh, let's give another round of applause for being here today. I couldn't be more happy to welcome Governor Lamont here today. And uh, obviously, I think all of us have been so impressed with this message of collaboration and working together that Governor Lamont has been uh, tirelessly speaking about. But I think what I'm more impressed about is it's one thing to talk about something, and it's a whole other thing to actually do it. And what we're seeing here is a governor who is leading with collaboration and bringing people together. I asked that we have a keyboard up on stage here today, but apparently that got lost somewhere. But without any further ado, Governor, welcome to East Harford, and glad you're here. Thank you. Well, thank you, awesome superintendent. And uh, hey, students of East Hartford High, how you doing? I'm so proud to be with you guys today. And as uh, you know, Nate said, um, if you believe in the future of Connecticut, you invest in the future of Connecticut. And we invest in each and every one of you. Uh, you've got an amazing building, you've got a great principal, you've got some of the greatest teachers in the world right here at East Hartford High. Let's get a hand for the teachers. You know, and they work their hearts out every day uh, to make sure that you're job ready, you're good people, great citizens, and make sure that this is a place, Connecticut, that you can call home uh, going forward. But we still have some work to do. And uh, that's why we're here today. We're here to make sure that um, every kid gets that opportunity. I see the Summer Leadership Institute here, a lot of folks uh, standing in front. The type of programs uh, that we uh, offer for folks during the summer to make sure they're getting ready for the um, you know, fall semester. Everything we can do in terms of other services to make sure that no kid gets left behind. And it's in that way that I got a chance to meet Barbara and Ray Dalio. Barbara and Ray have been so active here at East Hartford High, uh, down at Harding High, where I've done some teaching, um, and across the state. And today we're going to formalize what's an amazing relationship going forward to tell each and every one of the kids that we're here for you, we believe in you, and we're going to be fighting for you every day. I'll just tell you that we came, I came to the same place as the Dalios, um, from my own perspective, when they think about mentoring, when they keep about outreach, when they keep think about a big brother, big sister, other ways that you can have somebody to, who has your back and you can talk to. And uh, when I was a volunteer down at Harding many, many years ago, um, you know, I, I walked into that classroom. I was a little nervous the first time there, that, that accounting class. And uh, I did an okay job. But then I realized uh, I needed some help. And I brought in... Um, you know, folks from the greater Bridgeport community, folks that um, maybe had started up a business, and um, folks who could serve as a mentor, and somebody these kids could look up to. And many of these uh, folks, Joshua Grant, sold a soul restaurant. He invited a couple of the students to go be interns at his restaurant afterwards. And uh, Ray, you know, you and I share that when it comes to giving uh, young people a sense of that opportunity, some of the ideas you have in terms of microfinance, so that you as well have the opportunity you know, perhaps to start up, you know, an amazing job. And, you know, I was back at Harding just a, a week or two ago, and uh, we were there talking about doing a better job of recruiting teachers and more teachers of color and perhaps more teachers that look like you. And uh, I, I walked there to the Harding High uh, stage, and um, I was struck. Um, the kids sang a song as I walked in, and they said, our first day at school, we wanted to see if I had a teacher who looked like my mom. And I just remembered that mentoring and having a hand out and outreach and somebody that you know loves you, there's a lot to what that is. 
And that's what uh, the Dalio Foundation is representing uh, here today. Um, I'll just tell you that it's really, really important. We've, um, the most important investment I can make as a governor, and Susan and I can do as a team, is uh, you know, investment in education, make sure the next generation of folks are just ready to go and uh, hit the ground running. And, and we've done you know, a lot. Um, in a tough budget environment. You know, uh, I've had the smallest increase in, in budgets in a long, long time. Um, you know, I, I had to tell folks we're going to hold the line on taxes and do everything I can to get this state moving again. But I said something else. I said I need other people to step up and help me with this. I need other folks who are ready to roll up their sleeves and, um, you know, get involved in what it means for great education going forward. You know, last night I was uh, down at the... Um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, where they offer, um, offer mentorship programs to young people. The place was packed, everybody ready to step up and help out. You know, we you know, talked about workforce development and job training and uh, our community colleges. We reached out to the business community, said, we need some help from you. You need trained personnel. A lot of students are having a hard time with their student loans and uh, Travelers, and um, Stanley Black & Decker, other big companies have stepped up. So I want you to know, you get a degree in one of these uh, great skill sets where you got, we forgive your student loan, you go on and have a great job here in the state of Connecticut. And talk about stepping up. The Dalio Foundation has stepped up in a significant, significant way. You know, it's a partnership we have together. Uh, the Dalio Foundation is gonna contribute $100 million to make sure your education is the best that it can be. Your education is the best that it can be. We educate the whole person. We love the student. And we as a state are going to do our part. We're going to match that over a period of five years. And uh, Ray and Barbara and I are going out. We're also finding others, uh, philanthropics, folks who have a big heart who are going to step up and match that as well. This is $300 million invested in you, invested in um, our um, urban high schools, invested in rural high schools, making sure that each and every kid uh, gets their best shot. And I could not be more proud, Ray and Barbara, I could not be more proud to be doing this with you. And I'll just leave you with one other thought. I was, I was just talking to Barbara. And uh, she said, where did you get these amazing ideas? And where do they come from? And she said, you know where they come from? They come from you. They come from the teachers. We want, we're gonna have a board, a not-for-profit board. It's gonna include teachers. It's gonna include, um, you know, folks who are uh, contributing to this adventure. But the ideas are gonna come from you. You tell us the type of things that make sure that you and your friends have the programs and the confidence and the inspiration you need going forward. And we're going to make sure we can make it happen. So with that, I'll hand the mic back to your awesome superintendent. But I'm so proud to be here at East Hartford, so proud to be with you, and so proud that you're going to be great citizens of the state of Connecticut. Thanks, everybody. So that's a tough one to follow up, and I think I have to pull my jaw back off the floor on that one as well. This is a, a very big deal, but I, I also, there's a few other folks I want to acknowledge, and, and that's our faculty, who's kind of all around the gym with those watchful eyes, and I really just want to acknowledge them and thank them for being here as well. You know, when we all leave, leave here, they go back to work. <laughs> So uh, we really appreciate it. I also want to thank uh, Commissioner Wenzels here, who's a friend of ours, been a longtime friend of East Hartford, and just done an amazing job as our commissioner. Glad you're here, Commissioner. And I also want to acknowledge Lieutenant Governor Susan Beiswitz, who's here with us today, too. This is not her first time here in East Hartford, but man, we're glad she's here uh, on the Lamont team. So glad you're here. But for me now, as, a, as a, someone who's introducing people, this is a real treat, because I get to introduce a friend of mine. And uh, I'm introducing somebody who our students know very, very well. Uh, and I couldn't be more thrilled to talk about someone who, who really gets it, who really gets what happens when we invest in children, who really gets what happens when we honor families and put them forward first. You know, for us, for us here in East Hartford, uh, we know Barbara Dalio because we participate in the Summer Leadership Institute. 
We know Barbara Dalio because she's given us opportunities to attend summer wishbone uh, experiences that has taken us all over the country and opened up our eyes to opportunities that, you know, for me, maybe I just never had a shot at seeing. Uh, we know Barbara Dalio because Barbara Dalio has been there for us uh, in, in small, simple things, such as, and I'm always hesitant to even talk about these things because they're done in quiet. They're done in, in, in a subtle uh, act of, of pure generosity and care, of winter jackets for kids who need them. And Barbara, I, I couldn't be more appreciative to, to be your friend and to have you here as a partner. And uh, I'm just so thrilled you're here today. And, and on the behalf of all of our kids and families, really want to express our gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I know that this is a big production to, to bring all the faculty and, and so many students. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Governor, for partnering with us. And thank you, everybody, for coming together. Um, I love public education. I'm always humbled and inspired by everything you do. You're amazing. Um, I'm going to forget my words because I'm like um, very touched. Um, so, um, I started working with public education about 10 years ago, and um, I came across um, over the years with um, a, some students that uh, had dropped out of school and other students that um, were not too engaged, not because they didn't want to, but because of the poverty and their, their difficult circumstances that made it, made it hard. So they got in a cycle um, that is difficult to break. Um, and by giving them uh, job opportunities like um, technical skill, career training, we can break that cycle. So, uh, we commissioned a report, um, and it um, showed that there are 39,000 of those students that are disengaged or disconnected. Um, so we're really excited to come all together. Um, we don't have any answers, and I know that there are not too many answers, but I know that if we come together, we'll find the answers, and teachers and school leaders know what the answers are. So we'll all get together. Um, we're very excited about um, this opportunity. We're excited and hopeful and really look forward to getting together and, and start brainstorming about all the amazing possibilities and, um, and hope that there is for, for students. So. Um, I'm, I think I forgot all the things I wanted to say, but anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara, and, and that was a great job. It, as um, Sometimes it's amazing how much can be said with so few words. As someone who often says too many words, I really am envious of that. Our next uh, speaker is uh, someone who is also a friend and philanthropist who's got intense interest in the ocean and supporting education. We're thrilled to have Ray here today, Mr. Dalio. Thank you. We're so psyched to do this all with you. Uh, just to understand why we're so psyched, <clears throat> I'd like to tell you a little bit about where we're coming from. I grew up in a, in a high school which was very much like this, uh, and I was lucky to be in a lower cl middle class family who, with parents who cared for me and teachers who cared for me. <clears throat> and then um, I was very lucky 41 years ago to marry Barbara. <laughs> I mean, basically, 
basically all you really need, right? All you really need is, is a good public school education with people who care about you and then marry a good <laughs> wife, uh, <laughs> right? That's all you need. So just to cut short about this, 10 years ago, Barbara was uh, drawn into the communities and, um, and learned and she was affected by all of you. Really, she was affected by you, inspired by you. So for the last 10 years at the dinner table, all I was hearing about was you and how you inspired and also the lack of opportunities. In other words, just the not enough resources. So I was very lucky in my life to be able to live the American dream, right? The, and, and what it means most fundamentally is equal opportunity and most fundamentally equal opportunity in education. Most fundamentally, there's no good reason there shouldn't be equal opportunity in education. When you think like, what is the best investment you could make? It has to be in the children's educations, right? That's the best. And the teachers... <laughs> it's... It's fundamental. And, and then there's community. Um, there are a number of professors who've studied uh, what happiness is, is due to, and they, they find that there's nothing that uh, past a basic uh, level of income, there's no correlation between the amount of money that you have and the happiness that you have. The number one influence in, the, in happiness is a sense of community. Do you have a good community? And so when we think about Connecticut, we think about com this is our community, right? We're in this thing together. So we each can bring different things. We can bring some resources. And then when we see the talents and the programs, we, there's so many potential things that can be achieved. So our number one objective is to get particularly those who are having the most tr trouble, to get them through high school and into jobs. Like education can't be theoretical, it's got to deliver an outcome. And if you don't have an outcome in sight, when you're going through high school, that tangible outcome, you're not gonna have the pull to get through it. And so we want, uh, so that's what we're in a mission. And it was so great that when we would discuss this with the governor, like we came up, you know, let's do, let's do this thing, that we can do this thing. <laughs> so, so, we, you know, and it's pulling together, right? I mean, there, not only, well, we really believe that we're gonna have a great return on investment because we're going to have the double bottom line of a great social investment. And then also, when you think about the economic implications of getting kids to graduate school and get into a job, and what that creates for them and what it creates for the community, it's a highly economically and spiritually exciting thing to do. So, you know, we're, that, that's why we're really excited to do that. And when we hear programs and see programs, and, and Barbara is very modest, as you can tell. And the, the impact that she's been having, if you want to check out where we're coming from, ask around. Because there's 10 years of Barbara leaving her fingerprints all over the place. So we can do this now in scale because there'll be resources. So anyway, we're really excited to do this. So thank you for your partnership. You know, it's, it's amazing, guys, as I'm, and I'm talking to the students as we sit here and think about, you know, there's, there's many times as we grow through life, and there's times where we're wondering what's out there for me and where do I fit in this whole puzzle. You're sitting here today looking at some of, of leaders across the world. You're talking about some of the most important policymakers in the state who are coming together for a program for you. And you fit into that puzzle. You're the driver of this puzzle. And I am so excited that this is the reality. So speaking of the driver of this puzzle, this is the good part. This is where we hear from our kids. So without, without further ado, let's really give a real warm hornet welcome to our 11th grader, Stephanie Sensenu. We're thrilled to hear today.
Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> um, I'm happy to be here and to have this opportunity to speak to you all. My Ghanaian parents and I came to the United States when I was just six months. The first six months old. The first place we decided to settle in was the Bronx, New York, where I grew accustomed to gang violence and being the only African in my class for the next 12 and a half years. My parents looked towards East Hartford, Connecticut for a better life, a better salary, and to my astonishment, a heartfelt community with cultural diversity touching every crevice of the global world. For the first time, I wasn't the only person in my class whose family wasn't from the Dominican Republic. And although there were times where I would miss the fast-paced lifestyle of New York, I was glad that my parents embarked on the journey of settling in East Hartford. East Hartford gave me my passion, my true desire in life, and that is my love for culture. Thanks to East Hartford, I gained the strength and confidence to take my passion to the next level. I was awarded a scholarship by the Department of State to travel to Ecuador for three weeks, where my Spanish-speaking skills would serve me justice. <laughs> Everywhere I went to in Ecuador, I wore, my, I wore East Hartford on my sleeve. And every time someone would ask, de donde eres? I would quickly say, East Hartford, with extreme pride, that would make the New England Patriots envious. <laughs> When I came back from Ecuador, I became the president of the International Club, where I would continue to be exposed to more diversity. And at this given moment, I can safely brag and proclaim that I know someone who could cook up a mean batch of pho, or admitting to jamming to reggaeton whenever I'm home alone, or even trying Nigerian jollof rice, thanks to my Nigerian friends here. <laughs> so East Hartford, I thank you for everything that you have done for not only me and my family, but also for my future. And as I enter the real world in a few years to come, as a little Ghanaian fish swimming in the American pond, I will remain courageous and strong and re remember East Hartford whenever I'm far along. My name is Stephanie Onabo Sasenu, and I express my sincerest gratitude to you all. Thank you. Wow. So when we talk about return on investment, I think, I think we have a heck of a product to talk about. That was amazing, Stephanie. Thank you. Great job. So our next and final speaker, I don't know if needs an introduction. This is what it means to be a senior around here. And I told Lewis before we gave him the microphone, when someone gives you a microphone, make them take it away. So I can't wait to hear what Lewis has to share with us today. I, I don't really mean that. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, fellow upperclassmen and Governor Ned Lamont. I thank you for inviting me here to speak today and allowing me to tell my story. I'm in a good place, a place where I'm accepted for every single part of me, but my life hasn't always been this blissful. There was a long period of time where I knew I couldn't be my entire self. Living and going to my previous school wasn't bad, but it didn't teach me that I could show all of me and that I had to put restrictions on my personality and be careful about how I presented myself. Although living in a place and a time where only the acceptable parts of me were to be shown was not ideal, I accepted it. But right now, I'm in an environment where I know for a fact all parts of me are okay to present to others and that the things that were expected of me were all wrong. In an environment where my ambition, creativity, and confidence were always challenged, but only for the best. Life here in East Hartford High School has been nothing short of amazing. I have received nothing but support and acceptance from my peers and teachers. Here at East Hartford High School, I learned so much about myself. Being here has really opened my eyes to the world of opportunities waiting for me right outside those doors. I have learned to be a leader to my peers and to the people of my community, to be a role model by being my most authentic self with full confidence. The things I have accomplished while being in this building are things I have never even thought of doing, such as becoming co-president of our LGBTQ plus club titled The Umbrella Project, administered by the amazing Miss Merrill, and our student-run fashion club, working my way up to captain on both our step and drill teams, a representative of our AP art class on the Connecticut Association of Schools with Ms. Norridge, a student representative of our equity district team, where we discuss racism and other acts of mistreatment and injustice and how to improve them in our school systems, and a member of our leadership program that helped ease freshmen into high school life called Conditions Plus, which is supported by the Dalio Foundation. Okay. 
This school and the extraordinary people in it have made me realize that I can be who I want to be and more. I can be an artist, a caring friend, a performer, a diva. <laughs> that I can be Lewis, a spokesperson for my Latino community and my LGBTQ plus community. Thank you. I stand here showing that we can be more than the color of our skin, more than the language that we speak, and more than the people that we love. Porque ser diferente es un regalo, meaning that being different is a gift. I hope to take the leadership tools I've gained from here and apply them to the future of being a creator of my own brand and business. I'm grateful for the connections and relationships I have made on my journey of self-discovery in a place I like to call home. Thank you, East Harvard High School, for helping me transition from a conserved version of myself to a brave, open, and confident one. And thank you once again, Nell Lamont, for allowing me to share my story with you and inspire others to be nothing but themselves on this stage right here. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause for Lewis and Stephanie for sharing their story. So I think as we come to a close of our program today, for us as, as uh, East Hartford community, we're, we're headed back to class. We're headed back to work. <laughs> That's the good news, guys. That's the great news. But, but in that moment, let's not miss this big opportunity of knowing how people believe in us and how the story we're telling about East Hartford is a story we're talking about around urban education and where we defy the odds and we show people the value of our communities. Let's do that every day here. So thank you very much. Thank you for all of you attended. We really appreciate it. Uh, I've been told to direct to the media that we're going to do a short Q&A, just a couple questions uh, that Governor Lamont will take. But I think for the rest of us, uh, really want a warm thank you for coming and, and excited about where this is headed and where it's to go. Thank you. Well, you're coming. It looks like I forgot to pull the dismissal cord, so here it is. Thank you all for coming very much. <laughs>